Academy. Now, my name is Vanessa, and I shall be your host for this one and a half hours. Now, I'm sure all of you here are really very excited to hear from our invited speaker, Mrs. Gada, on uh, what she has to say about today's topic. But I thought before we get into that, it would be helpful for all of us to have an idea of what this one and a half hours is going to be like. Okay, so for this one and a half hours, we're going to start off with a sharing by Mrs. Gada. Okay, um, after the sharing, she, we will be going into the live Q&A session in which there are two different ways in which you can pose your questions. The first way is by using the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Now you can see that there is a chat function and there is another button that is a, that is the Q&A function. I would strongly uh, encourage you to refrain from using the chat function to pose your questions simply because we do not want a case where your questions may get buried under the slew of messages that could be coming in. Okay, so please uh, try to use the Q&A function to ask your questions and that's one way. And the second way is actually by raising your virtual hands. Okay, so uh, once we see that your hand is raised, we will unmute you and you can pose your question directly to Mrs. Gada. Okay, so after the live Q&A session, it would be the quiz competition. Okay, so for this quiz competition, the six lucky winners can walk away with a complimentary class point four for free for a total of three months. Okay, so do pay careful attention to what Dada is going to be sharing later because the questions are going to be centered around uh, the content. Okay. So after the quiz competition, uh, we are going to have the um, announcement of winners followed by um, a feedback session. Okay, so for the feedback session, please feel free to fill up the evaluation form and ask, let us know how do you find this webinar. Okay, now uh, for today's topic, right, in a nutshell, it is about SEL. Okay, and uh, this is so important in education that some countries have actually incorporated that into their school curriculum. Now, Take Singapore, for example, SEL is actually incorporated into our character and citizenship education, which include topics like mental wellness, uh, family education, and even mental health. Okay. About what exactly is SEL and what are some of the benefits of learning this? You know, what are some of the benefits of um, SEL? And actually, also very importantly, how can we practically incorporate SEL into our lessons as educators? So for these questions, we have our invited speaker, Mrs. Gada, who hails all the way from Egypt to share her thoughts with us. Now, Mrs. Gada is a senior English teacher who is also the head of training department at Mustafa Kamal Official Language School in Egypt and is also a Microsoft Innovative Educator expert as well as our very own class point certified trainer. So without further ado, let's give a very warm welcome to Mrs. Gada. Mrs. Gada, please. Hello, Vanessa. Hello, everyone from all over the world. Let me say again, good morning, good evening, and maybe good afternoon from all our educators all over the world. Uh, it gives me such a great pleasure to be here with you today. I'm really excited to be um, the, to be presenting the first session for Class Point International Academy webinar series. And today's session, it will be about what we call and what Vanessa has going to or has been uh, saying, it's about incorporating social emotional learning in our classrooms. So let me introduce myself again. My name is Ghada Hassan. I'm an English teacher from one of the language schools in Egypt. I've been working as a teacher for about 20 years. And I'm actually a Microsoft Innovative Educator for more than five years. So actually part of my work is to help other educators, maybe in my school, around the other schools, and maybe in my country or, or all over the world to incorporate, to use technology in education. So uh, I'm very happy and I'm really excited to be presenting such a good um, a topic for you today. And I hope that you are going to find many practical ways, many. Um, you know, many new ideas that you can take away with your, uh, after the session into the, your classes. So let us think together before going into our slides and before explaining everything, let us think and ask ourselves as teachers and ask ourselves about the purpose of our job. What 
actually teachers usually do and what they have to think of and if they are dealing with the students are they only about or are they only after giving them knowledge are they only after giving them skills to acquire other skills or what have we ever thought as teachers before about like the emotional side of, of learning have we ever thought about students emotions and feelings have you ever thought about that so let us think together and start our presentation by asking you this question. So what I would like you to do first, okay, to um, join our class, to join our class. So what I would like you to do is to go on any browser and write classpoint.app or just to scan the QR code here and then write your name and write the code here. Three, three, six, eight, two. Actually, I'm seeing a lot of people are joining us, so this is very motivating for me and made my day. So I try to encourage all of you to join our class, so they are, so all of us will be on the same platform, right? So I'm waiting for you to join more and more. So we have now 39, 42. So the the number is going up. That's perfect. That's perfect. Excellent. Okay. Okay, now let us think as teachers and let ha let's have a look uh, about our learners or even our children. What do you want our learners? What do you want your children to learn to be ready for the future or the world of tomorrow? So I would like you to think in a deep way and be ready for answering this question. Are you only about the cognitive skill? Are we only about the, the knowledge content or what? Are we only about helping students to acquire skills or what? So what should we do as teachers to help our learners to be ready for the future or the world of tomorrow? So I'm going to start the question and I would like you to answer there. I'm waiting for your answers. Yes, soft skills, life skills, good, excellent. To be creative thinkers, that's perfect. Resilience, excellent, well done. Manners, very good. Very good, excellent answers indeed. Yes, thank you for your participation. Yes, holistic character manners and good attitudes life skills and soft skills we need to integrate information technology of course we need to activate the best in them their humanity perfect perfect good answers really responsibility to be innovative right conduct active learning responsibility excellent problem solver 21st century skills fantastic Great, well done. That's perfect. So all of us, so I'm going to close the submission right now. Thank you for your, for your answers and for your participation. So all of us, I think that all of us now agree that we are preparing our learners for the future. And here we want to highlight that skills of the future are not only just science, engineering, math, or technology. So all of us think that social emotional learning skills are quietly taking that center in the process of education. So we are not only after giving students cognitive skills or only teaching them like um, knowledge content. So we have to think about how can we make them socially and emotionally intelligent in the class, not only in the class, but also in in, in, in different contexts, not only in their classes, maybe with their families, maybe with their friends, maybe with their, um, when they grow up and be uh, successful uh, workers. So I think it's social emotional learning or SEL is very important. It may be as important as academic achievement. And I think it helps students to function at high levels 
when they are faced with the challenges, with pressures, with problems. So it's very, very important, as you said in your answers here, because it helps them to live in life in terms of their ability to change, their ability to resilience, their well-being, their relationship qualities, their employment, and of course, in life in general. So we are going to speak about social emotional learning in a deep way. So our objectives today, our sessions objectives are going to be focused on what is social emotional learning? What is social emotional learning? And SEL stands for social emotional learning. So when I say SEL, so you know that, um, okay, okay. So uh, social emotional learning, uh, the SEL stands for social emotional learning. And we are going to speak also about the benefits. What are the benefits of social emotional learning and why should we promote them? Why should we encourage students to have such skills in our classrooms? We are going to refer to the most important thing, which is the social emotional core skills. What are these skills specifically? And I'm going to give you some practical strategies, some practices that you can take away to your classes that I hope that it will be applicable, practical, and useful to you to apply in your classrooms. So let's think about the, uh, the definition of social emotional learning. So it's actually the process of learning social emotional skills. So I, me as a teacher, I'm after teaching students social emotional skills that are vital for school, for work, and for life success. So we are not teaching them these skills, not only for their, um, maybe for their existence in the school, it's also for, for life. So it's the process of developing self-awareness. And what we mean by self-awareness is to be able to, uh, you know, know their emotions. They have to think about their emotions. They have to be able to manage themselves and they have to be able to build such interpersonal or such successful relationship with others. So they are very essential, not only for our kids in, the, in, the, in their class, but also in their life in general. So if we refer to some points here again, we need to refer to what we call self-awareness. And self-awareness means to make students be aware of their emotions and their feelings so they can sit and achieve goals, successful goals in their life. They can build such successful relationship with others. And this may help them in their life and maybe in their society, not only in the classroom. And also it is, I think it's the purpose of our human development, how to be sociable and how to be really emotionally and socially intelligent with other people. So let me ask you another question before going into the other parts of our session today. So why is SEL important for our learners? Why do you think that SEL is important for our learners as educators, as teachers? So I'm going to start the question and I'm waiting for your nice answers for the question. Why do you think, why do you think social emotional learning is very important for learners? Good, perfect. To balance the class environment, I love that. Really good. For mental health, okay, really it's coming very fast to know more about themselves, yes, to know their weaknesses and abilities, fantastic, good. To have such confidence in themselves, right? Okay. Perfect. To know their weaknesses and strengths, vitality in the class, so students are engaged themselves in any activity appropriately, well done mental and health awareness, very good. Okay, fine. 
to help learners develop many skills of the 21st century. Thank you. Self-awareness, well done. Very good. To develop self-esteem, I love that. Very good. Excellent. Thank you for your participation. I really appreciate that. Yes, thank you. Okay. Really, I love all your answers. All your answers are perfect. Good. So we have many, many answers here for from about 69 participants. Really, we have 105 people in, in our session already. So I want to have more answers from the whole participants. Good. Yes. To develop their social and emotional feelings when it matters most. Very good, thank you. To have a balanced life and learning, very good. So learning and life is one thing. I think they are one thing. Good. Okay. So I'm going to close the submission. Okay. Still some people are answering. Self-control and self-awareness, responsibility to their action. This is a very important thing indeed. And we are going to speak about in more detail. Good, very good. So thank you very much for all your answers and for all your participation. Thank you very much. So if we speak about the benefits of SEL for learners, we can say that, as you said, it helps them to improve their academic performance. So as long as students are mentally healthy, as long as they are socially and emotionally intelligent, as long as they are socially smart, they, I think they can achieve more and more in their performance, in their academic performance. And actually, if we invest more in this part, I think we will get more, more performance, more effective performance from, the, from our students. So another point is to decrease depression rate. And actually, your answers were, were good because some of people are, uh, some of you have mentioned something about depression rate. So if we think that social emotional learning is important, we have to say that it is important in decreasing the depression rates, the depression rates, because if we try to help students to be socially and emotionally intelligent, so we are helping them to manage themselves. So first of all, they will be aware of their feelings. So after that, they need to be self-managed. They have to know how to manage their feelings, their emotions, their impulses. And in this part, we need to differentiate here between two, two different maybe terms. The first one is what we call self-regulation and impulse control. If we refer to self-regulation, it means that students' ability or means like um, uh, both conscious and unconscious process that affect their ability to control responses. So self-regulation means the students' inability to regulate themselves, to regulate their movements. But if we refer to the impulse control, it means when people are cross or when they are angry and they have the ability to control themselves, to control their um, you know, their feelings and their responses. So we as teachers have to differentiate between these two things, self-regulation. So in many classes, in many schools, we can see some students who cannot be able to regulate themselves. Some of them can move a lot. They maybe don't have the ability to move from one activity to another. They maybe complain a lot. They have a lot of extra movement in the class. So we need to help them to regulate themselves. We need them to control their extra body movement uh, in the class. So we need to work on that part. So if we refer to social emotional learning ben benefits, we have to help students to decrease depression rates. And of course, as I said, better stress management. We have to learn them how to manage their stress. 
We have to learn them how to manage their feelings. Maybe when they are angry, when they are cross, when they are depressed, when they are frustrated, when they are demotivated, we need to, to help them to do that. So again, we are talking about the benefits of social emotional learning. It's very important because it helps learners and students to have better future success. So if the students have these skills, I think he will be successful in the future, maybe as a teacher, maybe as a doctor or an engineer or any context that he will be working in. So let me ask you another question, but before asking you this question, we, we need also to focus that social emotional learning is not only important for learners, but it's also important for teachers. So imagine as a teacher, if you are working in a class which is equipped with uh, you know, good students who are uh, socially intelligent, who, who know how to regulate themselves, who know how to control their actions, I think this class will be successful for the teacher and it will be more comfortable for the teacher to work in. So, the benefits of social emotional learning is not only for learners, but it is also for teachers as well. And if we want to think more deeply or more in a broader way, is it only for, for students at school? Is social emotional learning skills? Is it only for students at school or it may be for other people? I think that first of all, as long as we teach students in the class, so they are going to be uh, successful learners. So as we are talking about social emotional learning for students and for teachers, we need to have a wider look and think more deeply. So if we think about workers and workplace, I think that any nation, any country that have like, or maybe any, any place of work that have successful workers that have successful employees who, who are equipped with social emotional learning skills, I think, this place will be successful as well. So social emotional learning is not only for people who are working in maybe in organizations or in companies, it's also for the whole society, for the whole society. So building relationship, collaboration, problem solving, all known as skills for success. A life success like emotion management, problem solving, making responsible decisions, Maintaining healthy relationship also help to create such a compassionate society, such a successful society. So, it I think it's a very broad, uh, you know, a very broad topic. It's not only for us as teachers or as educators. It's about people in their work. It's also about people in different societies, people in different countries. Okay, let's move on to another part of our session which is about the skills of social emotional learning. What are actually these five skills and what should we do to promote such skills? Let's first together start with our first um, uh, skill, which is about self-awareness. What do we mean by self-awareness? I think it means to be able to understand your own emotions. You, as a human, as a, as a person, you need to understand your own emotions, your own thoughts, your own values, how we feel, how we think, how we value things, how, what our growth mindset is, what are our, um, maybe what are our strengths and weaknesses, uh, what things we like, our interests. Uh, if we are, have the ability to examine prejudice and biases, how efficient we are, how efficient we are, how efficient we are. So it is about self-efficiency. How do we have a growth mindset? What about your mindset? Is it growing or not? What about your interests? What about your sense of purpose? Do you have a, a, a goal in your life or not? So it is it, it also about your reflection. You need to think about yourself. You need to think deeply within your feelings, your thoughts, and reflect about that. The second important um, skill, which is about self-management. So if we understand our feelings, our thoughts, our values, our interests, 
So we need to have the ability to regulate our emotions and behaviors in different situations. We need to be able to set such successful goals and work towards them. We need to track these goals. So self-management means about how we behave, how we manage our stress, how we manage our feelings, how we stay focused when we have some problems. And if we have such perseverance in the face of some problems or obstacles that we may be facing in, in our society, how organized we are, how can we make difference? It's about managing your emotions, your impulse control, your ability to, to uh, uh, manage your stress, your self-motivation and your self-discipline, your perseverance, your ability to plan, what kind of organizational skills you have, how can you organize yourself, how far you can take initiatives and work towards that. This is about self-management. So this is the green part. It's about self, self-awareness and self-management. So if we move to social awareness, social awareness, this is a green board. It means the ability to take perspective, the ability to empathize with others, to, to be able to understand the feelings of others, to be able to put, put ourselves in the shoe of other people. So I think it's really, really important to think about other people's perspectives, their, their points of view, their strengths, to show empathy and compassion. This is really a very important thing to show concern, how concerned we are towards the feeling of others, to understand other people and to express gratitude, to say thank you, to appreciate diversity, to, to accept other people who are different. It's really, really important. And also to understand social norms. The fourth skill, which is relationship skills. So as we can be able to manage ourselves, as we are able to understand our self and we have the ability to manage ourselves and be able to understand other people's emotions and other people's feelings, I think it's the point, it's the start when we can build such successful relationship. So relationship refers to the ability to establish and maintain such healthy and successful relationship with others. So it's about communication, it's about collaboration, it's about the ability to work in teams. So all of them are 21st century skills, as you said in your responses. So it's about developing positive relationship. How can I develop a relationship with others, with, with my mates, with my colleagues, with my bosses, with my directors, maybe in, in my family, maybe in, in uh, outside the school and so on. It's also about practicing teamwork. How can I be a positive and productive um, member in the team? And how collaborative I am? How can I be able to solve my problems within a group? How can I solve, resolve conflict? This is a very important point. How can I show leadership in groups? This is another point which is really, really important. How can I help others? How can I offer support? How can I help others when they need that? How can I stand up for the rights of others? How can I defend other people's rights? And how can I support them and scaffold them? The last skill is about responsible decision-making. And really it's a very, very important thing. So decision-making or responsible decision-making is about our ability to make positive choices, to think about the consequences and the outcomes of situations and build upon them, to have the ability and to be responsible for positive and negative outcomes. So if we have taken some decisions that we are not satisfied with, we have to be able to change these uh, maybe decisions and make them better in the future. So it is about demonstrating curiosity and open-mindedness, how to be an open-minded person how to learn to make a reasonable judgment after analyzing situation and after analyzing different things. So it's not only about making a quick decision, but it is about analyzing situations and be able to maybe understand every pit in this situation. And upon this, I can take the reasonable decision or the, 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 the appropriate decision um, in my life.
identifying solutions for personal and social norms, many, many things, many, I think many, many skills that we need to help our students to, um, to acquire in our classrooms. So, as we talked about the skills of social emotional learning, it's our role now as teachers to incorporate and promote social emotional learning in our classrooms. So let us think together as teachers and as educators, what kind of activities, what kind of strategies, what kind of practice that we can take or we can make with the students to promote, to encourage them to be socially and emotionally smart. So I'm going to start the question and I'm waiting for your answers to come up. So what can we do as teachers to incorporate, to promote, to encourage social emotional learning in our classrooms? So I would like you to come up with some maybe strategies, maybe techniques, something you have uh, tried before within your class. Okay, very good. Group work, yes. Good. Teamwork, discussion, good. Reflective writing, I like that. Use journals, very good. Peer to peer instruction, okay. Think, peer, and share, right. Yes. Peer teaching, perfect. So, but we are thinking about students. Yes, thank you. Good. Yes, I think your answers are the same thing. Yes, thank you very much for your participation. Really, it's coming up, it's going up. That's very interesting. Okay, so group work, I think group work is the, the most, um, you know, the most, the, the most used strategy that you use in your classroom to make group work with the students. And I think it will build such uh, um, social and uh, social skills for students to be able to work in groups. Thank you very much for your participation. So I'm going to close the submission. Thank you. And let's together start with the most important, maybe the most important beneficial or the beneficial part of our session today, practical strategies to promote social emotional learning in our classrooms. So let's start by what we call morning meetings. Morning meetings. As you see in the picture here, the teacher is meeting your students. But if we think about morning meetings, so do you think that we are going to make just like meeting with the students? I'm going to meet the class and that's all. Uh, no, I think me morning meetings have some parts, have some uh, maybe uh, something which sh should be scheduled in your, in your work. So about morning meeting, the first part of a morning meeting or a successful morning meeting is greeting. So you need to think how you can greet your students and actually it differs. It's very important because it builds such like a social connection between you and the students. So it's very, very important to think how you greet your students. Some, stu some teachers, we can see them greeting their students at the beginning of, uh, at the, beginning of the class. So they can stand outside the class, uh, so to say, how are you, or to, to, have, to give high five to their students. So I think it's like building the, such safe community. And you can ask your students how you want to, how, they, how, you, how you want, or how they want to be greeted. Do you want them to give them high five? Do you want them to, give just um, say hi or a hug or, or what. And teachers need to make students feel that he is the only person in the class. So when you greet your students and have such an eye contact with him, he feels that he is the only person in the class. He feels that you are concerned, you are interested in him. You give such care to him. This makes him very, very happy. 
And in other classes, I, I see that some, some teachers are inventing new ways of greeting students, like if they are um, maybe thinking about how people greet themselves all over the world, so they can um, maybe search about different ways of greeting in, around the world, so they can change the way of greeting. So how, how the, this is how we can see Chinese greet others and so on. This is about greeting. And in greeting, it can be like an embossed chick to see how they feel and so on. Teachers also um, make different kinds of greetings for, for students, okay? What about sharing ideas? Sharing ideas is to make students share different ideas. Maybe you can ask them what, do you, ha what you have done in, in the weekend, what you have, uh, what you did, what did you do yesterday? So you can make students share together in partners when they are sitting in, in, their, in their classes, when they are sitting in their uh, desks, they can share ideas. And when you are doing this like in a virtual way, you can select two or three students to share their ideas. What about group activity? Group activity is really an important part of morning meetings. So you can make like different kinds of activities, of fun activities, engaging activities where students, with the students so they can share together and they can work in groups. So it's very important also to think about how you structure your, the students' group. It's very important to be, to, to know the, the aim behind the group. It's very important to know if your groups, if your students are going to be grouped in, in different groups, what I mean here is that, are they going to have different levels? Are, are the groups going to be homogeneous or heterogeneous groups? So you have to think of that. The structure of the group itself, who is the leader, who is the representative? We need to check that every student in the group knows his role in, 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 in the group. So the, the, the work is going very well. This is a very important thing also in the group working. The other part of the morning meetings is morning messages. So you can wrap up your morning meetings with making students write something like messages of kindness, messages of uh, gratitude at the end of your morning meetings. So it's very, very important to have like announcing things, making students write some messages at the, at the end of their morning meetings. So the, you wrap up, you wrap up your work or you wrap up your morning meetings. It's very, very important. And also at the end of a morning meeting, you can make some kinds of announcements. If you are doing something in the schedule and you want your students to know more about it, in the morning meeting, you can announce different activities, what's going to happen in the, in the school, what's going to happen in the class. So I think the morning meeting is also a, a, a good time for announcing new things that's going to happen in your school or in the class specifically. So within that, within greeting, within making students sharing their ideas and making them work in groups, I think this will help them to, 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 build, such re, to build such skills, relationship skills. It's very, very important for students and very, very important for teachers to, to observe how successful students are to build such relationship with them, with each other. The other, a uh, practical strategy, it's about monthly focus. And actually a monthly focus is about like values. So if we have about maybe uh, nine years or nine, um, I'm sorry, nine months in, in your school year. So you can make like a big, a big chart. And on this chart, you can write, you can write different values that you want your students to have or to practice like respect, honesty, responsibility, and so on. And then you announce that today, that this month focus may be about respect, maybe about honesty. You want to develop uh, their empathy. The, you want to develop their ability to self-control. The, the, you want to develop their ability to cooperate, to be, grat to be grateful to others. How would you do that? So what I would like to say here is that, that you have to, you need to have a monthly focus. You need to announce or you need to focus on one 
value each month and make different kinds of activities that promote that. So if you are focusing on responsibility, you can make different kinds of activities with, with your students. So you can scaffold responsibility, you can promote responsibility. So you can ask them, for example, to draw a picture of themselves while doing a, respons a responsible work. So they can they come up with different drawings, with different artistic work and describing themselves, drawing a picture of themselves while doing a responsible work or a good work in, from their point of view. And you can also ask them to make a list of things that are related to responsibility. So you can give them like a, a reflective writing or a free writing where they can write as many sentences as you can that refer to responsibility. How can people be responsible for others, for yourself, for the whole society, and so on. And also you can use different activities. This is actually uh, out of my creation, but you can use other activities. So you can ask them, I'm sorry, you can ask them to express their feeling. If, if you feel that you are uh, responsible, how you, how you feel when you are responsible, how you feel, are you feeling proud? Are you feel happy? Are you feel motivated? So it's very, very important. So as long as you focus on some values, you can give students different activities to practice these values in a practical way. So this is what we call monthly focus. Another way is about checking in questions. And checking in questions is really, really important. It, it, it creates such a, a safe and supportive learning environment. So at the beginning of the class, when you ask your students, how are you feeling today? I think it makes him really uh, feel that he is accepted, that he is safe in, in, in such a community. I think that he maybe if he if he comes with angry, uh, angry emotions, if he is angry, if he is upset. So once you ask him some questions about his feeling, I think this will make him feel comfortable and feel at ease. It's also not uh, time consuming, so you can put as many questions as you can. It doesn't take too much time making such chicken questions. And it also can be done in person and virtually. So you can ask your questions to students. You can ask your students questions face-to-face -face if it is um, a face-to-face -face environment. And you can also use other tools to ask students chicken questions. I'm going to see that now. So it can be done also at the beginning of the school year if it is a, a new class for you. So you can ask students at the beginning of the school some chicken questions to know more about them. You can use chicken questions at the beginning of a lesson, during the lesson, or maybe after the lesson. So it's very, very nice way to uh, help students to um, talk about their feelings, to, to express their thoughts, to voice their thoughts, and you as a teacher to discover more about their feelings. So what I would like you now is to think of some questions and get prepared as teachers. What kind of chicken questions you might ask your students? What kind of questions? So I would like you to share. So I'm going to run the question. So what kind of checking questions you might ask your students? Maybe at the beginning of the school year, at the beginning of the lesson, during the lesson, after the lesson, what kind of questions? So get prepared. Yes. Perfect. Good. How are you today, my students? Good, thank you. How are you doing? Perfect. How did you feel about the lesson? That's good, excellent. Yes, very good questions, indeed. Thank you for your participation. Using emotions, yes. Can you give me your widest smile? That's a very nice question indeed. 
how can you make the world better? Yes. So it's like a, a reflective questions. Make them to reflect, to think more. How can you learn? How can you express your feelings? Are you feeling okay right now? Are you happy today? Very good. Excellent. Thank you. How do you describe your state of mind? Good. Excellent. Give a song title to represent your mood today. Excellent. Nice. Nice question. That's good. Thank you for your participation. Really, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's start by giving you uh, like um, a way that you can use when you are teaching virtually. What we call Feeling Monster with Reflect app in Teams. Feeling Monsters with Reflect app in Teams. So it is like an app which is added into Teams by which you can ask students different chicken questions. So as you see here, this is a feeling monster. This, the teacher is going to post like a question and ask your or ask students about their feeling. And what makes it more interesting that they have what we call the feeling monster with different activities, with different adjectives, and also with different um, you know body language that helps students to choose the best. Um, adjective to describe their feeling. So if we have a look at this, if I'm going to look at one of my classes, this is actually Microsoft Teams. And in Microsoft Teams, you can find, or you can build like a, a class for students where you are in, in this safe place. So within Reflect, within Reflect, it's like a tab in your Microsoft Teams in your class. So if you click on reflect here, just give it a second to, to, to load. So you will find many questions here. You will find many questions here. So it goes like this. So the, the teacher first try to create chicken question. So he clicks on the chicken question and he tries to choose the question that he want to ask his student. Once he choose the question, he click next and the, the question is going to be appear in one of the channels in the, uh, in, the, in the class team. So let us look at the student's view. So this what students can see at the beginning here. As you see here, the students can see the question and he starts choosing the emoji, the feeling that is related to him, that he can express his feeling in this way. So for if, if we think more deeply about these questions, how are you feeling today? What kind, of, what kind of skills this question may develop? And if we talk about social emotional skills in terms of social emotional skills, I think this question may help students to define their, 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 their feelings, their emotions, I think it will leverage their awareness. It will build their, their emotional granularity. We mean the words or the terms that they can use to express their feelings. I think this question is very helpful because it makes students be encouraged to answer the question and express their feelings. And students also can use what we call, as you see here, if we go back to the, um, the presentation, you will find that we have this uh, feeling monster with different body language. So it makes them interesting for students to choose the best word to describe their feeling. Okay, so we have many, many questions. If we choose a question like overall, how did the week feel for you? How did the week feel for you? So when the students be able to like, know their feelings, identify their feelings, if they are happy or not. I think within this question, overall, how did this week feel for you? I think they can keep a journal. They can keep a journal. How, how their emotions are going up? Is it going up in the positive way or in the negative way?
Hello, everyone. Sorry, we lost teacher Rada. She, she will be back. I think it's because of the internet issue. She will be, she will be back in seconds and we'll, we'll continue. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, shall I go on? Yes, please. Okay. I'm sorry for that. No problem. Okay. Happy. So as we were talking about the Feeling Monster, it's an app which is added into Microsoft Teams and the teacher can use it to uh, check students' feelings with different questions. As you see here, if you have different questions. Can you reshare your screen? It does not appear. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Does it work now? Okay, now we can see. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so this is another app that you can use in, if you are teaching in a virtual class. Okay, actually you can use uh, Reflect in a different way. If you have a, a class team and you have a class notebook for your students, so you can actually use Reflect in your classroom or in your class notebook. So in Teams, Within your class team, you can add the Reflect app into your class notebook. So when you click on the class notebook and choose it, you will find the Reflect app in there. So it's very easy for this teacher to choose the, the question, the chicken question. So he can ask students maybe about their success, about their progress, about their motivation to learn, about their understanding of the content. Many, many questions, many, many chicken questions that the teacher can use to ask students within um, Microsoft Team and within a class notebook using the Reflect app. So this is another way of helping students to check, of helping teachers to check um, students' feelings as well. Another way, exactly, it, it's like the same. Uh, the, the, it's like the same uh, app, but it, it can be done in Microsoft Forms. So it's very simple. So when you are in the virtual situation, if you are teaching in a, uh, in a virtual class uh, and you don't have the ability to meet your students, you can use Microsoft Forms to make like a form with questions. So you can check in their feelings. You can ask them some um, questions about their feeling, how they are feeling. Are you feeling happy? Are you feeling cheerful and so on? And you can also give them like a, a space to write their comment, to reflect upon their work, to reflect upon their progress, their friendship, and so on. So this is also another way that you can use the interactive forms to incorporate social emotional learning, but in the virtual classroom. Okay. Okay, and also this will help students to be aware of their feelings. Of course, this is one skill of social emotional learning skills that we mentioned before. In the class notebook, it's actually another, uh, you know, interactive tools, which is added to Microsoft PowerPoint. So within class point, we have different kinds of interactive questions. You have multiple questions, word cloud, short cloud. These are the questions that we already use together within our session today. So we have a question which is called multiple choices, multiple choices. So how can we use such kind of question to motivate students to build successful relationship and to build relationship skills. So if we make like a competition between students, let me, for example, give you a question. So imagine that I'm your teacher and you are the students. So if I give the students like a question or a, a multiple choice question and I ask the students, but what I want to do here is to make students work in groups working group so I can highlight, I can promote what we call the competition. So if you add the competition mode feature, 
to your question, to the multiple choice question, you can make like that. And actually in the, in the class point, we have also another feature which is called the pick name. So if you try to, to, to um, I mean, to divide your students into groups, so you can pick a name, you can pick a name like that. So I'm going to show the names and say that Van, Mariam, Alan, Tan, and Ralph is going to be a, a group. And again, the other group is about, for example, uh, Jenny and Jazia, and uh, maybe I cannot read the name, but you can, by this way, by the picking name feature, you can divide your students into groups. So you can, uh, you can encourage them to work in groups. So when they work in groups, they can develop what we call the uh, successful relationship between them. Another way of course, and th this is what I've already used with you. This is a wordy cloud of the short answer. So you can use such tools to build the chicken questions. You can put as many questions as you can using the wordy cloud or the short answer. And actually the short answer can give the students more chance to write more and more. So you can take, you can understand, you can discover different emotions and you can learn more about your students' feelings. Actually, there's another way, which is the slide drawing. Slide drawing, it's like when the, the teacher gives the students a question and they have to, to draw something on the slide. So people who love art or who love to draw, can use this question. What I want to say here is that if you want to check your students' question, if you want to, um, if you want to uh, make them express their feelings, why not you use the the art? Why not you use drawing? Let them draw things about themselves, so you can discover more. You can explore more about their feelings. This is a really important thing, and also you can use the slide drawing actually to ask the students to reflect about their work, how they are feeling. So if we start by doing that, so what I would like you now to, um, to circle your emotions now, how are you feeling now and show your reflection. So we are going to run the question and I'm waiting for your answers. So by drawing, you can choose the emoji that express your feeling. Yes, just use the, yes, happy, okay. Thank you. So this is a way that you can use. You can use plus points interactive questions to ask students to reflect, to ask students to express their feelings, either at the beginning of the lesson, during the lesson, or at the end of the lesson, or whenever you schedule this. That's good, thank you. This is just only to show you how can we use the slide drawing to um, ask students about their feelings, to be aware of themselves and to improve the self-awareness skill. Okay, let's move on to another point very, very quickly. It's about emotion granularity. So if we want students to express their feelings, if we want them to be aware of their emotions or their feelings, how can they express that? What kind of vocabulary? What kind of wor words that they should use? So in this, in this stage, you need to develop you need to develop students' vocabulary so they can, they are, be, they, they are able to express their feeling. So we as teachers can teach students some positive phrases. Like if I say, if you want your students to express their feeling, like if, uh, if he wants to say that I'm not good at that. So instead of saying I failed, you can teach them to say that how can I improve? My, 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 how can I improve my performance? And instead of saying that my mate is better than me in, in math, so we can teach them how, how they can use positive phrases. You, you can teach them how to use positive words to express their feeling. And instead of saying that I'm not good at that, I feel frustrated. You can teach them to say, for example, I want to improve myself more. I want to work on that. So it is about using the phrases, positive phrases to express 
students' feelings. And also there is another way, which is a mode meter. A mode meter actually is a very uh, simple way. Uh, it may be interested to teachers, um, maybe English teachers, because English teachers always are after teaching students uh, words and vocabulary. So within the mood meter, you can have different kinds of um, emojis and words or adjectives. So it has to access from the high energy to the low energy, from the low pleasantness to high pleasantness. How can you express your feeling if you have high energy and you are very happy? How can you express your feeling if you have a high energy and you are not happy? So if you have high energy and you are very happy, you can use different, I mean, you can use different adjectives. Like you can say, I'm motivated, I'm excited, I'm proud, I'm very happy. So the teacher should teach students how can they express their, their feelings or their emotions when they are, when they are highly energetic uh, with, with, with happiness. How can they express their feelings if they have low energy and they are not actually happy? But the most important thing here is that the, 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 the student must have like a strategy to move from one, from one uh, adjective to another. So if you, for example, students maybe uh, um, have a lot of work, so they are uh, pressed, they, are, they feel that they are overloaded. So they can say that I'm, I'm furious or I'm frustrated. So if you feel that you are frustrated, what kind of strategies? that you have to use as a, as, a, as a student to make yourself more motivated. So it's the role of the teacher to help students to move from one emotion to another, to keep a journal of their emotions, to be aware of their feelings and to be aware of changing their feelings to be more successful in their life. So this is another important point that the teacher must teach students to be or to have like a, a, a strategy to make them move from one, uh, maybe from one emotion to another positive emotion. As we said, this is about self-awareness. So it helps students to be aware of their feeling, their thoughts and their emotions. Actually, you can use also the mood meter in a, in a word. So what I actually do here is that I put what we call uh, add-ins and I've added an emoji keyboard. The emoji keyboard has a lot of, uh, you know, emojis with different expressions. So what I've done here is that I put the mode meter in a Word document and I ask students maybe in groups to drag and drop the emoji that goes with or that match with the, 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 the adjective here. So as long as they work, they start making like a debate. So what's the difference if we are motivated and inspired? What's the difference if we are cheerful and festive? So it makes some kind of interaction or this discussion between the students so they can differentiate between different words and be able to express their feelings. So another way, which is actually a very interesting way, how to use gamification or game-based learning to promote social emotional um, skills. And Kahoot actually has given us different kinds of, uh, you know, um, interactive games that help teachers to make different kinds of uh, social emotional activities. So you can um, like use uh, other um, questions like to start, the, to start the school, how to start your school strong, how to manage your stress. And within every Kahoot, you have many, many questions. You have many questions so you can put this um, maybe a game uh, in, in your class or within your interactive uh, lesson. So you can start, you start asking your questions, different, uh, different questions about their feelings. So I've done something in here. Let me show that for you. This is Kahoot, as you see. And you have different questions here. So if I click on that, maybe comfortable emotions, if I want to check that students have um, comfortable emotions or not, so I click on practice just to show you some samples or some questions, how they look like. Okay, let me show you very quick. Okay, so what kind of questions 
can the teacher ask the students to check if they have comfortable questions or not? This is like an example of the questions that we can ask our students and we can use Kahoot. Kahoot is a very nice tool uh, for many students to use. They like it because it, it can create such a kind of engagement, excitement in the class that the students would love that. And it's also a nice way for them to express their feelings using uh, gamification or a game-based learning. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Actually, I've put the link for that, so you can use that as a resource and find as many questions as you can using Kahoot. Okay. Okay. This is another way, actually, it teaches us how to use what we call mindfulness. What we call, what we mean by mindfulness. So mindfulness means paying attention to something. It means slowing down to notes what we are doing. It means to be relaxing, to and instead of being rushing or have different tasks. When you are mindful, you are focusing, but in a relaxed way. So you can teach students mindfulness through games. This is actually like a board game. And what we only want to have is just a dice. So you can divide your class into, um, into different groups. And you ask them using this, uh, uh, um, I mean, a board game with the dice. So they can roll the dice and choose the number that match with the activity. Or you can make them divide divided into groups. So you can ask them who would like to stand up and stretch, who would like to make exercise, who would like to read the book. And within the book, you can make them listen to music and so on. Who would like to draw some pictures. So all these activities can be like um, a mindful practice for them to have like a mindful uh, moment and um, maybe to release all the anxiety and all the stress that they may have within the school year. So it is about self-awareness and it's also about self-management because when they do these activities, they will be able to manage themselves and also about social awareness to be able to understand other people's feelings and also it's about decision making. The last point that I actually want to share, it's about brain break. And brain break is very, very important. Brain break is very important and it's actually a part of learning. They are what we call small mental breaks designed for students to help them be more focused and be more attentive. And actually, while brain breaks, while giving students brain breaks, they are not act, they are not passive. Actually, their 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 mind is in the default mode, in the default mode. So we try hard to make students focus, so the blood and the oxygen can flow to the brain, and this will enhance energy and relaxation. One last point that I want to share is that what we call the primary recency effect. It's like a theory, and it refers to that. Uh, the first, the first maybe 15 minutes of the class, it's the, the, the most time when students are mainly focused. So don't miss that. It's the time when the students are really focused. So you need to start teaching the most important, uh, maybe most important uh, information you want to present. And within that, what, what, what happens with the students that they, they can fade, they can go down, their concentration may go down. So you in this time can use what we call brain breaks. And again, the most, the most um, memorable, memorable information will be the, the recent ones, the recent ones. So brain breaks can be physical, can be like a movement, or it can be mental. When we make students listen to music, to read a mindful book or to read a book about mindfulness, and this helps them to manage their stress and be aware of their uh, feelings. So why do we use a brain break? It's very important. We should know why should we use brain break? Is it about 
We want to energize our students. We want them to be focused. We want them to be calm and so on. And actually different kinds of brain breaks can be used like yoga position. You can give the students a chance to make yoga position. You can make them uh, make active movements like stretching or doing some exercises. You can ask some chicken questions. You can make like a partner group or a group work that makes them feel energized or maybe focused more. So um, these are some links to other uh, resources that you, find, you may find useful about social emotional learning. So I would like you to visit these uh, links and learn more about social emotional learning. I hope that my session was not very long. I actually have done many things, but I was trying hard to help uh, many teachers with many strategies, many part, many uh, practices that you can take away with your class. Thank you for your listening and being patient with me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Gada. And I'm sure a lot of our audience here are so appreciative of what you have just shared with us. Um, because when I was just looking at the chat, you know, and as you were sharing uh, your content earlier, so many of them were saying that this is such a fantastic presentation and how much they are benefiting from this. So thank you so much, Mrs. Gada. And uh, so, yes, ladies and gentlemen, right now is the time for Q&A. Now, uh, maybe we could just address some of these. Uh, Mrs. Gada, please do not leave yet because there are some questions that are for you to I'm respond. here. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, um, right. So somebody first asked this question. Um, I'm not sure who this person is because it is anonymous. Um, but the question goes like this. Um, can teachers integrate cultural heritage to SEL? Can teachers integrate cultural heritage to SEL? And this question yes, I, is posed by Man Manolita White. Yeah. Yes, cultural heritage is very important. We have to built like feeling of belonging to our students, how they feel belong to their country. So if we think, or if we teach them something about cultural heritage or things about monuments, and we need to keep these places safe, we need to keep these places amazing for others. So I think, I think you can develop different kinds of values. The most important value is the feeling of belonging. The most important value is the being to, to feel responsible, not only for your class, maybe for your house, but also for the whole country. Hmm. All right, yes. thank you so much, Mrs. Gada. Um, all right, we have another question here, uh, but I'm not exactly sure what the question really is, but it says, what emotional education classroom? Uh, I'm not quite sure what this question means. Maybe it's what is emotional education classroom. Uh, this was actually asked quite early on in the webinar, so I hope that the question has been answered. But if not, um, yes, please feel free. The person was anonymous. Please feel free to uh, pose your question again. Okay. All right. Maybe uh, yes. Can I can I answer please? Maybe um, he, he maybe um, he he understood that social emotional education can be done separately from from the class no or from the subject matter you you teach no you can integrate between teaching students such skills within your within your uh, within your subject with the, with the subject that you teach so if you're teaching your students social emotional skills try hard not to make such uh, uh, I mean, such division between teaching these skills and teaching your subject. You have to integrate that within your subject, and this will be more successful for them. All right. Is the answer your is the answer your question? I hope so. Yeah, like I said, if let's say the question has not been adequately answered, kindly feel free to uh, pose your question again. Maybe if we phrase it. All right. Thank you so much. And we've got some more questions. Uh, the next one goes like this. Could you please share the examples of brain break activities for upper elementary students that are basically from grades four to six? Yes, actually there are many, many brain breaks that you can use with the, with the elementary students. And uh, it's not necessarily to be a physical activity or a movement activity. So if you ask them, for example, and, and I, I've, I've, I've talked about that at the beginning of my presentation when we talked about self-regulation and how can we help our students to control their, their, their extra movements. So we can use like um, maybe movements to help them to uh, control themselves 
So you can use like um, run and freeze. It's like an activity. Uh, so you can ask your students, for example, to run quickly and freeze like a lion. You can ask your students to run quickly and freeze like a frog. This is an activity. Uh, you can make like um, a dance party. So you can play like an exciting music and you ask your students to dance and then you stop and, and so on. Okay, yes. right. Thank you, Mrs. Gara. And the next question goes like this, asked by uh, Mr. Allen. How can SEL be effective in heter heterogeneous classes? How can SEL be effective in heterogeneous classes? Do you mean heterogeneous to be different levels, different interests? Um, and, okay, for this question, yes. I think it might be helpful to get, uh, maybe Mr. Allen could explain a little bit on what he, what he means by heterogeneous. Okay, so um, maybe we could have Mr. Allen to unmute himself. Miriam, could you help us with that? Yeah, sure. I'll open it right now. Yes, keep your questions coming. I could see that there's quite a number of other questions by Joanne as well as Elio, Elie, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, right. Ellen has actually responded through the Q&A and he said, yes, he means it as different levels. So, yeah. How can SEL be effective okay. for different levels? Yes, actually, when you are doing an activity and, and within this activity, you, you, you group your students with different kinds of interests, different kinds of levels, different kinds of learning styles. I think each student may help the other to work better. And I said before, if you are doing a group activity, you must be aware of what kind of groups you want to do. If it is a heterogeneous group, as you said, different levels, or it's a homogeneous group. So it depends on the activity itself the aim of the activity, the objective of the activity. Do you want the fast achievers to work together and the low achievers to work together or do you want to make them mixed? So you have to think as teacher, how can you group your students? And it depends on the objective of your activity you do. Okay, and the other question by Joanne is how can we address the student's problem in distance learning? Um, in terms of internet connectivity. Um, but I'm not too sure, Joanne, on whether this is quite so relevant in the context of social emotional learning. Because this can, sounds can I answer like please? A, I can answer this because we have many features in in the, in the um, you know the in the in the like in the Microsoft Teams you have many features like you can use different kinds of feelings, uh, the emojis, the thumb ups, the, the heart the students or you as teacher can help students to express their feeling while you are doing your session. So it's very easy. It can be done also in Zoom. You can use different kinds of emotions here in Zoom so you can express your feeling. So when you ask your students, for example, to express their feeling or to say something about what you are feeling, what they are feeling, so you can encourage them to use such feature. And also, I think when we, teach students within the virtual um, situation. We are not thinking about uh, maybe our faces within the camera. We won't make, make them to see, for example, our physical environment. So they, are, they feel that they are engaged. So it's not only about facing the camera or making students like to face the camera. We can make them or we can encourage them to share their physical place and share something about themselves. If they have a pet, they can show that into the camera. So they make them more, uh, uh, you can make your the distance learning more interactive and more interesting for them. Okay, I hope that the question had been answered because uh, apparently she had put it in bracket as the problem is internet connectivity. So uh, yeah, if it didn't quite answer your question, maybe I would encourage you to um, pose your question again. Uh, later on, yeah. Uh, that question was actually posed by Joanne Valdez. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, moving on to the next question. How can we integrate SEL in special education? How can we incorporate in, integrate SEL in special education? Special education. I think it's really, really important. In really important to 
uh, to help other or other students who may be like disabled or have um, disabilities to encourage them to uh, to to promote their skills social emotional skills uh, actually i'm not a specialist in in, in this part um, but i think you can use different kinds of activities to help such kind of students so you can promote social emotional skills and the most important thing is about their feeling their feeling if you ask them about their feeling regularly i think they can feel that they are safe they are engaged they are a part of such community, so they are more included in the class. There are many ways. I think there are special ways for them to teach them social emotional skills. Yeah, so hence yes. the question is actually about how- Actually, can... it's a very nice question, by the way. Yeah, um, but yeah, I guess uh, I understand that Mrs. Gada is not uh, exactly a specialist in special education, so <laughs> it might be better to be asked to um, educators who are perhaps more in this field. Thank you so much for your question, though, uh, Elio. Yeah. All right. The last question that we have here is actually by Maria. And she's asking, can you suggest that SEL activities which are appropriate for college students? Yeah. College students. Yeah, college students. Hmm. Yes, college students are adults. So you have to be careful when you are uh, designing uh, these activities for them. Um, I think they are they are different from young learners. So in terms of, for example, frame breaks, you cannot use uh, frame breaks that I have already shown. You can use uh, different kinds of frame breaks, maybe traps, maybe uh, uh, open discussions for them to to speak more freely. Uh, you can ask them to like um, maybe uh, use what we call uh, um, self-study or they can make like what we call the, the partner work or the group work more often so they can learn from others. I think they are they are very old or they are, yeah, I mean, they are uh, adult enough to uh, manage their feelings, to be able to manage their stress, their, their, their emotions and so on. Okay. We have got yes. just one last question here. I'm afraid, I'm afraid that we do not have time for all the other questions that are coming through uh, through the chat. Yeah, I do, I do see some questions coming through the chat. Um, but yeah, due to time constraint, I think I'll just move on to the last one, which is how are we going to deal with those students who do not want to collaborate or be included in SEL, maybe SEL lessons? Yeah. So how do yes, we actually it's the rule, it's, yeah it's it yeah it's the rule of the teacher as long as you encourage them to be included as long as you encourage them to be in within their within their within their mates uh, you can do many many like uh, tricks to help students to to be engaged more so if you feel that you are not successful from the very uh, attempt you can try hard and hard to help them to be more engaged you can make some kind of relationship between their their families so you can ask about the problems you can ask about the causes of uh, which makes them uh, like to be excluded or like to be isolated from other students this is another another uh, way that you can help uh, students who don't like to be included in activities this is very important you can give them the due care the due care as, as a teacher to help them to be within their students and work more work collaborative collaboratively in, in a group all right okay i think we have only got time for these number of questions you know what i know that you have got probably more questions to ask mrs gara uh so we are going to be sharing with you this deck of slides and in addition to that you will get the email address of mrs gara as well so you could just post your question directly okay and we are, move, we are moving on to the next segment of uh, today's session, and that is the quiz competition. Okay, now the quiz competition consists of four questions. Um, okay, let's take a look at the instructions. Okay, so first of all, join the class if you have not yet. Um, Mrs. Gada, maybe you could do me a favor by clicking on to the... Um, top right corner to so that people could have a look at the QR code. Yeah, now there is a total of four questions. 
Okay, um, yeah, so you've done our class just by scanning the QR code that you see on the screen and just enter your name. Okay. All right, thank you so much, Mrs. Gara. Maybe you could just close this screen that will minimize it. Thank you so much. And after that, okay, so there are four questions with 30 second response time per question. Now, the key to winning is really two ingredients that you need, okay? Uh, you need speed as well as accuracy. So even if you are fast, but you are wrong, you probably may not end up at the podium either, okay? So I hope you have been paying attention in the last 30 minutes or so because the questions center around Mrs. Gana's content. All right, let's move on. Okay, question number one goes like this. Which of the following are benefits of SEL? You may choose more than one option. And of course, that means there is more than one option. Okay, so have a look at the options and I'm going to be starting the multiple choice in a while. Here we go. But let's hide the responses. Okay, you have got 20 seconds more. Please respond to the questions through the class point, okay? Because I will only know the results and the leaderboards from class point. Okay, and you have got five seconds left. All right, and time is up. Okay, now these are all your answers. Let's just take a look at what the correct answers are. Okay, so apparently they are all of it. Now let's take a look <laughs> at the leaderboard to see who are leading. Okay, so congratulations to Nisa, Maureen, Stila, Sita, Sita Lai, I think, Glenn Arthur, as well as Ronnie. Okay, thank you so much for your participation. But you know what? We have got three other questions left. Okay, let's just see if you are going to maintain your positions on the leaderboard. Okay, second question goes like this. Which of the following are the core competencies of SEL? Again, you may choose more than one option. Okay, so which ones are the correct ones? Let's begin. Now for this, I am not going to be showing you the correct answer in the dinner board so soon, yeah? Okay? Just to keep you in suspense. All right, we have got about 10 seconds left. And in five, four, three, two, one, and your time is up. All right, let's have a look at the correct answer only later on, okay? Let's move on to question number three. Got two more questions after three. Okay. So ex question number three goes like this exhibiting self discipline and self motivation falls under which core competency of SEL? If you could recall at the very beginning, um, Mrs. Gada shared about a few different competencies. So this one belongs to which competency? Let's go. There is only one answer for this. This is really testing your memory. So, Mrs. Gada, this is a great time to see who has been listening. Yes. <laughs> you have got about 10 seconds left, thereabout. And in five, four, three, two, one, and your time is up. So many of you chose B, but I'm not sure whether B is really the correct answer. <laughs> we shall know later, okay? And we are moving on to the final question. Anticipating and evaluating the consequences of one's actions falls under which core competency of SEL? It's social awareness, self-management, relationship skills, or responsible decision-making. This is the final question, ladies and gentlemen. So we can see at the end of this question, who's going to walk away with Plus Point Pro? Complimentary. Six lucky winners will walk away with that prize. Now, some of you may be thinking, hey, you know, I've already got Class Point Pro, so what's the motivation? Well, you know, people say 
sharing is caring, right? So you are free to gift that to someone else who you think can benefit from having plus point four. All right, then your time is up, ladies and gentlemen. Now, many of you who chose D, and let's see if that is the correct <laughs> answer. And yes, congratulations to the 68 of you. And let's just take a look at the leaderboard. This is the final leaderboard. And these are the six winners. Congratulations to Kiwi, Sitalai, Sita Janice, Ronnie, Janeline, and Onins. Congratulations to the six of you. Okay, but um, please uh, do not uh, leave. Okay, especially these six winners because I need some information from you. And I will be uh, asking you for the information in a while's time. Okay. So let's just take a look at the previous questions. Um, okay, question number three, right? What is the correct answer? Um, number three again. Exhibiting, exhibiting self-discipline and self-motivation falls under which core competency of SEL? And yes, the correct answer is... Oh man, okay. Let's just take a look at this. Okay, option B. And what is option B? Let's just go back to the slide. Perfect. B is self-management. As you can see there, Excellent. there's lots of self-word, right? Yeah, so that's really a hint. This, yeah. this gives me an indicator that I'm a good teacher, by the way. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, and this question is of the following are the core competencies of SEL. Let's just take a look at which are the ones. This one has more than one correct answer. And the answers are A and C. Okay, so A and C are self-awareness as well as relationship skills. All right, so once again, once again, congratulations to our six winners. Now, for our winners, this is what I need you to do. Please use the chat function and send the message to host. Uh, please do not send a message to everyone. Otherwise, everyone will get your details, okay? And these are the details that we need from you. They include the nickname, your nickname that you have used, your full name, your mobile number, as well as your email address. Just a reminder to send a message to host and not to everyone, okay? I'm, I'm sure you do not want everyone to know all these details of yours. So these are the four things we need from you in order to send you the license key for unlocking your class point pro, all right? Okay, now moving on to the next portion is I'm just going to be sharing with you some of these contacts um, that uh, for to, to get in touch with Mrs. Gada. You could contact with her, contact her via her email address or even connect with her through LinkedIn. And uh, finally, we would love to hear from you. Please do share your views with us on this webinar. Please let us know what, what you think so that we could always make improvements for our subsequent sessions, okay? So allow me to, uh, to just copy and paste this link onto the Zoom chat so that if you wish to use your laptop instead to um, respond to the questions, you can, okay? Uh, Mrs. Gana, maybe you could do me a favor by copying and pasting the link and put it on the Zoom chat. Yes. Thank you so much. Shall I stop and, sharing? Uh, not really, uh, because there's another okay. thing I need to do. Uh, can you just go back to the last slide, the one on the evaluation, so that people can have a uh, just copy and paste this link onto the Zoom chat, and yeah, just leave it here because um, I think some of our audience here would like to do a scanning of the QR code. Yeah, I think we better click outside. Yeah, otherwise it's blocking the. Uh, yeah, I put that on the chat already. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is the QR code. You can either scan it or you could just go on to the link which is on the Zoom chat. And yes, uh, I am really fully aware that a lot of you are also really very excited to save this deck of slides, right? Okay, so we're going to share this entire deck of slides with you right now. And this is also through the class points um, feature, which is share PDF. You know, there are many times where at the end of the lesson, our students will be asking us, Oh, teacher, can we have the deck of slides, right? Okay, it is very common. So usually our response is, yeah, yeah, let me email it to you at the end of the lesson. But you know what? With class point, you don't really have to do that because immediately after the lesson is over, all I need to do is just to click on share PDF. And of course, depending on how um, big the file is, your PowerPoint file is, uh, that will determine the speed 
of coming up with the PDF version of the slides. So, you know, all these, um, if you have made some annotations on your slides, it will be reflected on it as well if you decide to keep the annotations. So yeah, they're all going to be right here. So just give it a little bit of time. But we do understand if you don't have the time to wait, um, yeah, we can always email this to you. Yeah, There you go. You know, with the device that you have joined us with, you could just click on open slides. You don't even have to scan it. In fact, from your um, phone itself, you could just immediately um, open, click on open, uh, open slide and you have it on your phone yeah, or your laptop, whichever it is. Yeah. Okay, and now thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your participation in today's uh, webinar. We hope that you have had a really enriching and insightful session with Mrs. Gada, who has shared, who has been generous in share, sharing her knowledge with us. So with that, till the next uh, Class Point Academy webinar, have a great day ahead or evening. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen.